everybody. This is Dr. Gusso with you on my back porch in beautiful, dry, warm Oxford, Mississippi. Today I'm going to give you a, a relatively brief lesson, I think, inspired by my son, Sean's practice on euphonium. He's been working through the sort of various exercises, uh, classic exercises that his teacher, Dr. Micah Everett, has given him. And it made me think that it's something we don't do very much in harmonica, but I heard some interesting melodies floating out of his horn, things I hadn't heard him play before. And I thought, well, those are really, they're useful. They develop facility, and over the long run, you're, you'll be happy that you did these things. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do some four-note descending patterns. First one, and, and so they all involve bends, um, and you need to be able to do bends. I'm going to use a C harp, key of C. Um, and I'm going to simply say that these are useful in various ways. Uh, they're, they're just a useful pattern to have. So the first, the first is, starts on the three draw. Now in some cases they're chromatic all the way, in some cases they're chromatic for a few notes, and then they're not chromatic. So this first one is, the, is in that second category. I'm going to go, do three notes in a row that are chromatic descending riff starting from the three draw, and end on the two draw. So I'm going to leap at the end from the, well, you'll see. Now, what am I doing? Well, first thing is, I'm one, two, three, four. It's, it's kind of in a shuffle pattern. And so the key thing to understand here is that I could be doing them in several different forms. And you should do every exercise like this in at least, um, against at least two grooves. So this is sort of a, at a slow, relaxed shuffle. So the notes themselves are three draw, three draw half step bend, three draw whole step bend, and two draw. So all four notes are draw. What does that mean? Well, it means if you do this repeatedly, you better make sure you get some air back in there. So start on the three draw. The challenge of this particular exercise is that it's, it's not easy to go from three draw to three draw half step bend. Now in this case, I'm not doing the blue third. I'm doing a straight half step bend. It's B, B flat, A. I guess that's what we're doing. So that's the B, but it's the three draw. Don't worry about B, because you can do this on all key harps. And I would urge you to practice it on all key harps. Three draw, half step bend, Whole step bend, and two draw. Seems simple, right? And in fact, when you first do it, you should do it um, at that slow tempo, not trying to keep it in time. Just sound the notes out and get the pitches right. So I'm doing lip pursing, and I am my my my... I'm doing it, I'm actually scoring the bend in the forward part of my contracted embouchure, if that makes sense. Now what I would suggest, if, it, if it's hard to get that, those three notes so that they're sequential and e sort of equal half steps, those first three, okay, then maybe you want to go from the three draw bend to the three draw, th from the three draw and unbend to three draw whole step bend, just to make sure you know what that whole step bend is supposed to sound like. And that's of course three blind mice. Now we're going to try to put the note halfway between those two notes. You begin to see the challenge, right? So it's a challenge, it's an ear challenge, it's a bending precision challenge. I'm not gonna tell you how to get the notes, I'm gonna just say this is an exercise you should work on. And of course, by the time you get, when you, when you go from the three draw whole step bend to the two draw, you need to release all of that bending energy, that sort of shaping thing you're doing with your mouth, 
to get an unbent two draw. So that's the next challenge. If you don't do that, you get a bent two draw, which you don't want. Now I can use my tongue to articulate the bent notes. And in fact, I'm sort of doing that even, but in a sort of non-aggressive way, I'm lightly accenting them with my tongue. If I don't, it would sound like that. So I'm, my tongue kind of, not the forward part of my tongue, but kind of intermediate tongue is sort of lightly gracing the roof of my mouth. Do it how you would. But know that euphonium players like my son are constantly talking about lipped versus slurred or tongued versus slurred, slurred being the one that doesn't have the tongue involved at all. So here's another way to do tonguing, which is to do each note several times. Harder. I can't really do it right off the bat. But that would be that so if I can't do it right off the bat that would be a good thing for somebody at my level to practice you see how it works you work on the things you can't quite do now I will say that this is C harp suppose I try this on a an a lower harp so you should move this around from harp to harp here's a D harp that's a custom harp too, so it's easier to bend. Didn't quite nail those. Wow, Gusso. Not very good on that, so I need to work on that. Why is it easier on the non-custom harps? This one's so responsive. So I'm gonna do my trick of going first to the whole step bend. Three blind mice. make sure that the three draw was not pre-bent. want to make sure the three draw is not flat because if it's flat it's harder to go from major third because you're already slightly below that to minor third. Okay we're in the weeds on this. Let's go. That was number one. And by the way so I did number one but I can do it in a different groove can I? Um, Ba 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 You get the groove? Now here's something else I can do. I can go up. I actually find that a little easier. You know, this is great practice for me. I should be doing this kind of stuff. I'm going on tour in about a week, actually, well, a week, a week from when I'm recording this. So the key thing is precision, not only precision in time, but precision in pitch. And that's really what these are teaching you. Okay, so that's the first one. Now here's another one. I'm going to go start on the two draw. And I'm going to go down, two draw, two draw half step bend, two draw whole step bend, two blow. That's straight chromatic.
and it should sound since it's straight chromatic from the from the tonic note to the major seventh to the flat seventh to the major sixth they're all equally spaced on a guitar it would just be going down one fret at a time four frets you know for a total of four frets i guess three three full anyway, four frets so they should sound equally spaced so the challenge here then is to get two equally spaced bends to the major seventh and then the flat seventh on the two draw the two draw will allow you to bend a little below the flat seventh a little more than a full step right if i pull all the way it's actually below the the flat seventh so i've done this with you guys right are all tricky they're slippery but you if you get them right you can hear yeah sounds coming from down below you can really hear it right if it's done right and you want to make it sound musical so there suddenly I'm feeling it as music it's not just an exercise and that's really important too So I'm going to go down. Oh. It's interesting. It's easier coming from below than from above. Okay. So I've got those two. Yeah, and I'm already. Look, it's looking like I'm already at 10 to 12 minutes here, which is sort of. I want to go short this time. So I'm gonna. I'll show you one more. Well, I'll show you one more which is the same thing that I just did of this last one in the upper octave. So we're going to go nine blow to nine blow bend. And it may be, it's nice and you, it's easier to do this one in some ways. Um, so it's nine blow, nine blow bend. There's just one bend on the nine blow. Nine draw, eight blow. and go down and then go back up. What am I doing? What am I doing there? I'm just showing off. It's just fun. Um, okay, we should be able to do that one in a different groove. <laughs> but also a shuffle. I'm not going to show you how to use it yet. We'll do that at some point in the future. One more. One more. This is a little more standard in some ways. Um, it's four draw to four draw bend to four blow to three draw. Let's go from going down, let's go up. Blue Monk, something I do all the time. You know what? I'm just going to keep this lesson going. I'm going to show you some others. So that. That should be easier. That should be easier. The four draw bend is real easy to control relative to the three and relative to the two. What happens if we speed it up? What happens if we change the groove? You 
years ago, I heard Annie Rains do something that caused me to literally, like, pull my car to the side of the road. It was, a, it was on an F harp, and it was a, uh, I don't know what the name of the song is, but you'll tell me. It was da 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 chromatic descending run on an F harp from four draw down to down to one draw remarkable remarkable with a little you know the chromatic runs that don't happen at the, at the very end of that thing but basically going straight down so the only note left out would be the overblow between one draw and two blow don't even need it because it, everything fits in. So you're going, it's remarkable, you're going chromatically from four draw straight down to two blow. How about that? Pretty sure that's what she's doing anyway. So there is a use for this stuff. Okay, now, overblows. There's a couple of cool ones you can do with overblows. So how about this? This is the parallel to the one that I've already done in the lower octave and the upper octave. I'm doing it in the middle octave. So the lower octave. Na, 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 na. Now I'm going to do it in the middle octave. In order to do that, I have to go six blow, five overblow, five draw. Is that right? to five blow. Wow. Okay. Six blow, five overblow, five draw, five blow. So if you don't overblow, don't ask me to teach you how to do that. Go and just Google Gusso overblow and you'll learn. Okay. This is a C harp. And again, going up sounds really cool. It's, it's easier going up than going down if you're an overblower. Now, why is this useful? Blue Monk, Blue Monk. Wow. You have to use an overdraw to do it on the upper octave. Anyway, so that's when you begin to put these things together, they get kind of cool. Okay, so that's going up, going down. One more for today. I don't know if there are, there are others that one could find, but here's, let's do the parallel using overblows in the middle octave of the very first thing that I did. So the first thing I did was da, 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 da. Seems like real old fashioned kind of Americana, right? Okay, I'm going to do that here, starting on the seven draw, the major third there. And I'm going to use the six overblow. That's six overblow. So it's seven draw, six overblow, six draw, six blow. enough for today. There are others, but these are the main ones. Okay, hope you had a nice time. I'll be back with you as soon as I'm able. See you down the road. Bye-bye.